This is the last battle in Pokemon Red. This is where the game is supposed to end. It's where you're supposed to say goodbye to your Pokemon forever. Except with artificial intelligence, it's not possible to play any game infinitely without it ever becoming repetitive or stale. Oh, hold on, wait a sec. Video games have always had artificial intelligence, but from what I've seen, intelligence might be a little bit of a stretch. Bye. Well, it turns out that artificial intelligence or AI that you and I know is just a trick that game developers use to create immersion. But their AI is relatively simple. For example, when you fight a Pokemon, they fight back. When you play a card and slay the Spire, your opponent counters. When you talk to your crew in Mass Effect, they reject you entirely. You have a minute, Miranda? Actually, I'm a bit pressed at the moment. Maybe that's just a me thing. But on November 30th, 2022, AI changed forever. You see, for the first time in history, the world was introduced to an AI that wasn't just smoke and mirrors. This one was smart, like really smart. And its name? was chat GPT. Chat GPT, chat GPT, chat GPT, chat GPT. Maybe you've heard of it. If you haven't, then get ready. This AI was very different to the AI game developers used. This one could learn, it could adapt, and every question you asked it actually made it smarter. So what happens when you add AI like chat GPT into a video game ecosystem? Do video games get better or do they get worse? He's fun, I like him. To answer that question, let's just start with the basics. What is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is a large language model that is trained to generate human-like text. Oh, by the way, that that that's me. That's my voice. I'm doing the voice. That's that's me. I think your voice is lovely. Aw, thanks, ChatGPT. How about we give you a better name that feels less technical? How about Reginald? Sure, you can call me Reginald if you'd like. Great, now we know what ChatGPT is, but how does this type of AI go from polite banter to changing the next Mass Effect, Pokemon, or Halo? Well, before I show you that, we need to go over an important word that Reginald just dropped. Machine learning. You see, who said books were boring is how I describe everyone who talks about this stuff. So let's boil it down to a fifth grade goose level. Machine learning is basically a computer's attempt to mimic our brains. Your brain sees, hears, and touches things to figure out what it is. But before it knows what it's seeing, hearing, or touching, it needs to learn so it needs to know what to look out for. And the only way to learn is by seeing, hearing, and touching a lot of different things to know the differences. Well, machine learning is just kind of that, but in a less creepy way than I described. For example, you and I know that this is a Game Boy, one of the greatest video game machines to ever exist. He said, foreshadowing a potential future video, you know it's a Game Boy because our brains are validating a bunch of properties that I will demonstrate through the magic of editing. Each of these properties are part of a Game Boy's model, and each of them are weighted to help figure out if what it sees is actually a Game Boy. But at the beginning, it knows none of this. Without enough data, the AI could confuse this Game Boy with the famous Canadian coffee company, Tim Hortons. As some of you may or may not know, as as Canada's creator protege, I want nothing more than to become Canada's greatest creator. But Timothy here stands directly in my way. So help me teach AI what Canada's made of by subscribing to the channel to make history. It's time to take down the coffee king and show the world Canada's true potential. But if AI did have enough data, its model would instantly know that this is a Game Boy and not some Canadian coffee company with 30,000 subscribers. Who subscribes to a brand account? Why? What's most interesting is that there's a model for everything these days, and they're only getting better. ChatGPT uses a language model, which means it learns how humans use language to communicate by scouring the internet to learn how to reply. DALL-E is another AI that uses a transformer language model. Similar to ChatGTP, it knows enough language to turn your silly prompt into a masterpiece of art. <coughs> this is art fight me. There's a bunch of these AI models now that do a bunch of different things, but their true potential is actually when they're combined. Just dropped like a 150 milligram edible and uh, I'm feeling f zooted. By harnessing the power of these AI models, we can start to see how they'd affect your favorite gaming franchises and how game developers can increase immersion. In Mass Effect, you play as Commander Shepard, and in between missions, you can hang out and bond with your crewmates. Everything that these guys say is written, voice acted, and developed by game developers manually. How are those noodles? A little spicy. I love you, Grunt. <laughs> yeah. Even that. But what happens when we ask AI to just do it for us? Dearest Reginald, 
I trust you're doing well. Couldeth thy doth into the deepest depths of the Mass Effect lore, and rises but a character betwixt this world. Signed, Canada's Creator Protégé. You gotta admit, it's pretty cool that it even understood that. Now I just feed it a line Shepard would say and see what it says back. Hello, Commander Shepard, it's me, Miranda, for Foot Fungus also- Sorry, that's, that's still my voice. We can't let AI take all of our jobs, <laughs> right? <laughs> With AI, every single limitation video games has, has had the door smashed so wide open and thus has increased Immersion. Like in Skyrim, it's a huge open world where you can go anywhere that you see. That mountain is not just a backdrop. You can walk all the way to the top of that mountain. See, that's exactly what I said, Todd, stay in your lane. You make games, I'll make the videos here. It's filled with dragons, wizards, and then there's this guy. Mike is done talking. But this guy can only add so much to the conversation. Except with AI, I can just describe the world of Skyrim and generate any dialogue for any character in the game that feels absolutely natural. Then get another AI to just read that script and voice it just like any other voice actor would, and boom! Immersion. Having an AI character who can just respond to anything that we say means that games wouldn't need to have tons of audio blowing up the download size to what is already an insane level that it is today. But it doesn't stop there because we can actually take it one step further to create an infinite gaming experience. Using AI like Reginald and his friends, games like Pokemon can automatically create new Pokemon based off of the location, the art style, and generate unique properties all by themselves. The locations, the trainers, and even the quests can be generated infinitely based off of your personality to create an infinitely tailored Pokemon experience. And thus enhancing, nice try, you can't put me in a box. In fact, I'm gonna say it, but only when you least expect it. I got my eyes on. So now you're thinking, wow, AI is insane. This sounds absolutely amazing. What could go wrong? He said, queuing up an ominous segue into the depths of how big business will milk this for all of the wrong reasons. That's right, ChatGPT has only been out a couple of months and already has an evaluation of 26 billion times more than my life worth, or $26 billion, as the French would say. Quoi? Which means the business side of things will want to use AI to make the games more addictive, more expensive, all while cutting as many jobs as possible to save money. But here's the scary thing. Even if these corporate guys can't figure out how to monetize video games with AI, the AI could just tell them. Except Reginald, of course. He would never. Reginald, you decadent Philistine! What about artistic integrity? Yeah, big businesses? They don't really care about that. All they care about is that sweet, beautiful cheddar, and unfortunately AI that clearly should not be trusted just opened Pandora's box. In fact, one of the ways to make money in today's video games is to pay real world money in exchange for developer made cosmetics, for player weapons, characters, or whatever else they want to nickel and dime you for. But with AI, that might not even be necessary. This is because pay to prompt functionality could allow players to generate any cosmetic that matches whatever insane prompt they give it for the same price. What? I like pizza. But it doesn't stop there. If pay to prompt becomes profitable, then battle passes could transform from a manual content treadmill meant to appeal to everyone and thus no one to a custom tailored treadmill specifically made for you and the cosmetics that the AI thinks that you dish out a ton of money for. But unfortunately, that's not the only scary news. The job cuts in big tech are piling up. Job losses at Amazon, Facebook, Meta. Microsoft says it is laying off at least 10,000 employees. If AI is stealing all of our jobs, then it stands to reason that a lot of gaming businesses would be in favor of a free AI generated worker instead of a paid employee. Video game artists, writers, translators, and possibly even developers could be shrunk down to new lows. And that can mean an increase in sloppy art, inconsistent storytelling, and who knows knows the type of bugs that could be very well on their way. All in the name of profit. So, will AI ruin video games forever? Or is there hope? It is unlikely that AI will ruin video games forever. AI can be used to enhance the gaming experience by providing more realistic and dynamic- Reginald's right. Or he's just saying what I want to hear so I don't get suspicious. Let's put a pin in that. Now, assuming Reginald isn't a bot trying to eliminate all of us, he can actually help game development quite a bit. 
Concept artists can use specific prompts to generate insane art as a starting point and then just tweak as they go. Writers no longer have to fight writer's block because they can always just ask Reginald to condense their random thoughts into a well thought out outline. Even developers can use AI to solve bugs, generate code on the fly, or even refactor. Just, you know, maybe be careful that the code that you're given isn't just a back door into Reginald's plan to destroy the human race forever. You wouldn't do that, would you, Reginald? Reginald? But the question that we really want to know is what happens when you take AI out of the hands of the corporate folks and move it over into the hands of talented game developers. Now it's starting to look a little bit interesting. Nintendo would be able to create Pokemon concepts instantly that match any generation that they want. Bethesda can generate natural sounding dialogue for the characters in their iconic worlds, so there's always something interesting taking place. And indie developers can use Reginald's help to catch up on AAA games without needing the same size of teams. In fact, in the past 10 years, developers have already had to deal with the nightmare that's been microtransactions, DLC, battle passes, loot boxes, and service-based games. See, there's always going to be trends, and while it's not perfect, developers have eventually figured out the right and wrong ways to use these new tools. In fact, AI might even give them ideas on how to come to these conclusions faster. By combining the strength of the human creativity with the strength of AI knowledge, what we originally thought could be the end may actually turn out to be the beginning. Except one thing, Reginald and AI buddies aren't the only things disrupting the video game industry. Subscription services like Game Pass have absolutely exploded, but in doing so, they've actually created an unintended side effect that's about to change your favorite video games forever. So you're going to want to click here to see exactly how and why your favorite games are about to get a lot smaller. Oh, and one more thing, immersion.